Did you recently roll your ankle or sprain your ankle? Are you unsure if it's the lateral ankle sprain or the dreaded high ankle sprain? Well, we got you covered today to cover the key differences between the lateral ankle sprain and the high ankle sprain, as well as key information that you need to know about high ankle sprain. So stay tuned guys. What is good Hoopers? My name is Gabe Ignacio, Doctor of Physical Therapy, Board Certified Orthopedic Clinical Specialist, and Co-Founder of The Basketball Doctors alongside with Dr. Marco Lopez. Our goal here is to educate you guys and give you evidence-based information on all things basketball related. So if you could help us out by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing with friends, to help us reach as many Hoopers as possible to help everyone in the basketball community stay healthy and perform better and move better. So if this is the first time you're listening, hit that subscribe button. We'd gladly appreciate it. And all this information is for educational purposes only. This is not medical advice. So if you are having issues, please reach out to a medical professional or email us at our email down below. Uh, with that being said, let's get up after our topic of high ankle sprains versus lateral ankle sprains. All right, so we're gonna go over what a high ankle sprain is. So generally, a high ankle sprain is the generic term for a syndesmosis injury. So the syndesmosis is a complex that holds the tibia and fibula together and it is congruent with the talus or the ankle joint itself. So it's called a high ankle sprain because of the location of where it is. So it's right above the ankle joint and that's where most people feel their symptoms and that's where the injury occurs. That's why it's called a high ankle sprain. So what is included in the syndesmosis complex is the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the syndesmosis membrane, and the syndesmosis ligament. As well as the del deltoid ligament on the medial side of the ankle contributes a little bit to the stability of it overall. So the syndesmosis stability is the ability of all those structures to keep the tibia and fibula at the proper length from each other and allow that congruency to happen between those two bones and the ankle joint itself. So we're gonna go quickly over the anatomy of the ankle joint again, um, focusing more on the higher part of the ankle. So this is the left foot here. This is the tibia, this is the fibula, the talus or the congruency between the ankle joint right there. And the syndesmosis is this little gap that you see in between the tibia and the fibula. I'll show you on the knee model, it's gonna be higher up obviously, but the syndesmosis is a space right in between the fibula and the tibia, and that's where the ligaments are in the anterior part, posterior side, and then you have a membrane that's right in the middle between that hold those together. So on the knee model real quick is, so this is the right one, so fibula here, tibia here, the syndesmosis goes all the way up and see how there's a gap in between there? All that's kind of similar all the way down to the, where the ankle is and the syndesmosis allows this space to stay stable when we move. All right, so we're gonna go over the mechanism of injury of a high ankle sprain and how it differs from the lateral ankle sprain. So as we know with the lateral ankle sprain, very more common to happen when we go into inversion and slight plantar flexion and that causes an overstretching of these ligaments on the outside part here that we went over before. And then for the high ankle sprain, it's a definitely different mechanism. So it's typically happening at a high force when you're stopping or jamming or landing. And what happens is that your foot goes into extra rotation, a little bit of pronation and then dorsiflexion. So when you go into that position, your talus here right at the top of the ankle where it meets the tibia and the fibula, that talus gets jammed straight up into that area. And remember how we talked about in the anatomy is that the syndesmosis is a space in between the fibula and the tibia. When the talus gets pushed up, it actually causes damage to those ligaments and the syndesmosis. So it, causes, it can cause a little bit of separation between the tibia and the fibula. And that's when you get that high ankle sprain. And then the grades are dependent on the severity of the injury that we'll go over in a second but that's how the mechanisms of injuries differ from the lateral ankle sprain versus the high ankle sprain. When you have this injury, there is a differential diagnosis thing that does need to happen, whether you roll your ankle inward or you get that jamming effect. Um, there is reasons to get an x-ray. Um, so first off, 
The same rules apply in the lateral ankle sprain video of should you get an x-ray following an ankle injury and those are when you can't take four steps immediately, you have tenderness at the lateral malleolus and six centimeters above, sharp and tender pain, same thing at the medial malleolus, six centimeters above, sharp and tender, as well as at the base of the fifth metatarsal and at the navicular. So if you answered yes to any of those, uh, it is suggested that you go get an x-ray to rule out any fractures. And the high ankle sprain, it is very common to get multiple imaging. Studies have shown that x-rays show any potential fractures. A CT scan is a little bit more specific and more sensitive than a x-ray will show good bony landmarks. And then the MRI is actually the gold standard. It is shown to be 96% accurate where it'll show you soft tissue structures as well as any displacement or issues of the fibula and tibia or any other fractures above and below. So if you feel like you have, have an, a high ankle sprain and your symptoms are kind of higher there, then we recommend that you should probably seek out medical advice and see if imaging is warranted for yourself. So what are the differences in signs and symptoms of a high ankle sprain versus lateral ankle sprain? So early on, they're gonna be relatively similar. You're gonna have some swelling, some bruising, um, a lot of that tenderness around the area, but as time progresses, you'll start to notice that it might centralize to a certain area and focus on a different area that's where you're gonna differentiate between the two. So with the lateral ankle sprain, you're gonna typically have that pain on the outside part of your foot, so kind of around the tenderness around here. Uh, the high ankle sprain, it's gonna be more of tenderness kind of higher up, so that's where you get the high ankle sprain uh, terminology where it's going to be a little more tender at the top part or higher part of your ankle right near that junction of your tibia and your fibula both on the front side and on the back side and you could have like diffuse general pain going up the ankle or down into the foot as well as the tenderness is going to be all kind of generally higher up and not on this outside part. Another thing that you might notice is that when you go into ankle dorsiflexion you'll feel more of that tenderness up shooting up up your leg versus you won't really quite feel that with the lateral ankle sprain and also if you actually rotate your foot you will probably feel more symptoms higher up into the ankle and when you go into that extra rotation you won't really feel anything at the lateral part of your ankle so there's some difference between signs and symptoms of the lateral ankle sprain versus the high ankle sprain. And the grades of the ankle sprains are relatively the same. So there are three grades based on severity. Um, it just differs on what the structures are actually damaged. So grade ones are typically minimal damage to the structures. There isn't any st structural anatomical instability. Um, the only difference is the, like the signs and symptoms and location of the injury. Grade two is there's moderate damage to the ligaments where you might notice some clinical tests are positive and some light laxity. Um, research has shown for grade 2 high ankle sprains um, that there is mixed results whether the syndesmosis is stable or unstable and being stable and unstable is key because if it's an unstable syndesmosis surgery is unfortunately the only way it's going to get its stability back and that's what takes us to grade 3. So grade 3 is a complete rupture of the ligaments and structures involved. So for a grade 3 high ankle sprain, you're going to have complete disruption of the syndesmosis and typically surgery is warranted for that type of injury. So the grades of injuries for, lateral, for ankle sprains are pretty much the same. It just depends on the structures and how what rehab is going to look like after that. So the question becomes how long am I going to be out for? What does outcomes look like if I have a high ankle sprain versus a lateral ankle sprain? So unfortunately, no matter what grade of injury you have, whether it's a grade one to grade three, high ankle sprains tend to take longer and it's a long recovery rehab and road to recovery in comparison to the lateral ankle sprain. And like what we mentioned before, if you do have an unstable syndesmosis, surgically, surgery is typically warranted. So with that being said, 40% um, of patients report that up to six months after that high ankle sprain, they still continue to have feelings of instability. So that's where we really recommend you're in the right hands and getting the proper team around you to rehab appropriately. The good news is that high ankle sprains only account for about 11 to 12% of all ankle injuries and that's on the higher end of what research has shown. Alright guys, let's recap of what we went over today on the difference between a high ankle sprain and a lateral ankle sprain. So high ankle sprain is a generic term for syndesmosis injury. 
Like we mentioned before, it's that space between your tibia and fibula. And the mechanism of injury is very different for this injury versus a lot of ankle sprains. So for the high ankle sprain, you're going to be in more extra rotation, pronation, and dorsiflexion. And that jams the talus into the tibia and fibula and creates some spacing at the syndesmosis or high ankle area. And that's where the signs and symptoms are different. As you kind of progress, you'll notice that your symptoms for the high ankle sprain are higher up and that can cause some pain or diffuse issues in the front part or in the back part as well as going up and down the ankle and that leads into prognosis where no matter the grade of injury high ankle sprains take to, tend to take longer than lateral ankle sprains and if you want to know and learn more about lateral ankle sprains you can click the video here and we'll go more in depth of lateral ankle sprains and what that entails because it is the most common injury that we see in basketball we also released a four-week lateral ankle sprain rehab rehab and prehab program. If you want to check that out, click the link below. You can kind of use that to get your ankle right or prevent future injuries just to make sure you're getting your ankle as bulletproof as possible. All right, thank you guys for listening. If you're still here, if you found this video useful and valuable for yourself or you learned something new, please, please, please hit the subscribe, like, or comment down below help us grow our channel and help us reach as many hoopers as possible. If you didn't like what I talked about, or if you didn't like how I delivered it, please hit the dislike button, comment below so that we can improve and get this channel better. Again, we are the Basketball Doctors. Let's ball for life.